Welcome to Nature's CSI, Creepy Stories of Invasion. I'm Dr. Tom Stolgren. This is Episode 7, Invasive Diseases. Cloudy with a chance of meltdowns. Outbreaks and meltdowns. An example of a typical disease outbreak may be when the Europeans came to North America and gave smallpox to the Native Americans. They traveled around in small groups, died off pretty quickly. A meltdown may occur when one invasive species facilitates another. For example, if that infected Native American hopped on a horse, another invasive species, they may be able to travel for 10 days while being contagious to several different tribes and groups and infect them all. Let's look at some diseases out there that could cause either outbreaks or meltdowns. Bubonic plague, West Nile virus, swine flu, any number of flus, and avian influenza. The question we're asking is, are there some non-native species, some alien species, that can help spread those diseases from a regular outbreak pattern to a meltdown? Let's look at swine flu. Influenza pandemic of 1918 killed an estimated 50 million people in just a few months, more than any other disease in recorded history for that short period of time. You know that we have domestic pigs. We brought them in from Europe, and we have them scattered throughout the United States for pork production. We've added to those wild hog, and all of these pigs and hogs can carry the same flu diseases that we get. And so when you look at a typical flu season, in this case, 2012 to 2013, you see how rapidly things could be spread across the United States with without pigs. We move around flus in cars and planes all over. Well, let's look at pork consumption now throughout the globe. It's going up. So is poultry going up, poultry production and consumption. We'll talk about that in a moment. But because these species can carry diseases that can be transmitted to humans, I'm a little bit more concerned. But I'm even more concerned about global air travel. We move things around the globe at an incredible rate, including people that carry diseases. So you might be contagious, get on the plane in Europe and fly to the United States very quickly or back and forth among the continents. And now if we look at the flu seasons, they're becoming more chaotic. We may be getting flu seasons, not just in the winter, but from other winters, from other parts of the globe. So we can spread around these diseases. The flu season is now all year long in some cases. Let's look at bubonic plague. Plague is a bacterial disease that killed 75 million people out of 360 million people along trade routes and via merchant ships in Europe and Egypt and Asia in the 14th century. It was called the Black Death. And then the Age of Discovery brought rats and infected fleas all around the world. Those fleas, for example, like the Oriental rat flea, originated in Egypt, but now it's everywhere in warm areas. And then in colder areas, we have the northern rat flea. They can become easily infected. And because there are mammals everywhere, we can spread the diseases, this bubonic plague, to lots of mammals, including humans, but also to cats and dogs and other mammals. Let's look at that rat distribution now. Rats are the second most invasive species we know. They've conquered the globe much like humans have. And with them, we brought fleas. And so when you look at the world distribution of plague, say in 1998, you see about the same general pattern where there are fleas and rats and other mammals and humans, that's where you get the plague. But I'm really concerned because scientists have recently reconstructed the genome of the first recorded bubonic plague and they found out it was different than the later pandemics. They've used sophisticated equipment to show that new strains of this disease could break out in the future and cause havoc. Let's look at West Nile virus. West Nile virus is an infection re reported in 300 species of birds and mammals. And of course, many humans have died from the disease. It has a typical cycle between mosquitoes and birds and can end up in horses or in humans. But dozens of alien species also carry West Nile virus, including horses and dogs and cats, domestic chickens and turkeys, and many alien birds, including 
house finches, European starlings, and even invasive mosquitoes, like stepping stones, every non-native carrier makes it easier for West Nile virus to spread. And if those species are species we surround ourselves with, like dogs and cats and horses, the odds of infection to humans could go up. Let's look at avian influenza, H5N1. It has a fatality rate of 60% in infected humans and up to 100% in infected poultry. It's a complex evolutionary disease. It's moving and changing rapidly. The latest strain has DNA from domestic ducks, wild birds, which I'll get to in a minute, and domestic poultry combined. This can spread to humans. So this disease mutates and changes quite often. What has me worry is we have long distant migrant birds that can move the disease very fast. Recently, scientists have put in transmitters in 23 species of birds in 12 countries and just found out how quickly they can cover the globe. These birds can travel very far, very fast, and some of them could be carrying diseases. Now, the disease has not yet gained capacity to move from human to human, but it would only take a few mutations, a few genetic mutations to change all that and we'd have the domestic poultry in backyards and farms and ranches to act as stepping stones to harbor the disease. So let's look at outbreaks and meltdowns again. In bubonic plague, we have Norway rats, invasive fleas, urban encroachment into wildlands, and all of this has increased the exposure we have with dogs and cats and mammals and fleas and later spreading to humans. We have swine flu with increased global pork production, wild boars, and other species that can carry the flu. We have increased human pig interactions and increased air travel, including intrahemispheric air travel that can spread flus around the world very rapidly. We have West Nile virus that is carried by alien birds, alien mosquitoes, and increased exposure to dogs, cats, and horses again, and hence to people. Lastly, we have avian influenza with increased global poultry production, increased exposure to many other people flying around the globe. And if it mutates, we could be in serious trouble. So let's do what we can to prevent these meltdowns. Let's provide some research and some predictive capabilities so that we can stay one step ahead of these diseases as they start changing. Thanks for joining us on Nature CSI, Creepy Stories of Invasion. If you have an idea for another show, shoot me an email, check out our websites, and in the meantime, get out there and save the world. Thanks.